Hello, everybody out there. I can't hear you, but you can hear me, hopefully. Um, my name's Amanda Hazel, and I'm the Vic Branch President um, for the AWA um, here in Victoria. And I know we've got people from Western Australia, people from South Australia, all uh, dialing into this webinar, which is really exciting. Um, so first, come first off um, the rank, cab off the rank. I'd like to. Um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which I'm uh, meeting you from. I live in Melbourne's inner west um, in a suburb called Seddon um, and the traditional owners in my area are the um, Wurundjeri, Wurrung and Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nation and I'd like to acknowledge um, their elders past, present and emerging. And one thing the Victorian branch likes to do is tell some stories about um, our connection to the traditional owners and the city I live in is the city of Maribyrnong um, and Maribyrnong means I hear a ringtail possum and I have a family of ringtail possums that live in my ceilings so you may hear them coming out during the course of um, our, um, our present presentation but um, they're usually pretty quiet but just in case um, you may hear them. So um, a couple of housekeeping things to start with. This is the first um, webinar series that we've run as a live one. Um, so please bear with us and the technology. Um, down the bottom of your screen, you'll be able to bring up um, a little bar that's got, you see how many participants are on the call. You'll be able to see Q and A um, chat. Um, so please use the chat for any comments or any little um, discussions you might want to have. Um, Q and A, we'll have um, people putting questions in there and you'll be able to rank which ones you'd like to hear answered most from our panelists. Um, and we're also gonna be trialing a poll. Um, so you'll get a poll come up um, and we know that um, the poll might be a little bit delayed and we do have done a couple of trials. So please bear with us if it doesn't work. Um, we are trialing in the technology for the first time, um, but we appreciate you guys coming on the line and, and getting involved. So really, really um, happy to have you on board. So um, why are we all here tonight? So um, to talk a bit more about um, business intelligence tools and, and how specifically Power BI can be used um, by people in water utilities to start to tell stories with data, to start um, providing insights into information, um, information um, and share, share information better rather than just using Excel spreadsheets. So, it's a surfboard, Chris. <laughs> Thank you for asking um, the question. I've just had a question, is that a surfboard and ironing board, but it's a surfboard um, in the background. Um, and so I'm a, I'm a data junkie from way back. So I'm Melbourne Water's Capital Reporting Manager, but um, I'm a chemist by training. So if you told me 13 years ago um, how much the world of data analytics would have changed, um, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. I was still using Excel, um, you know, SQL um, databases and, um, and using um, writing scripts um, to produce macros and things to do fancy things with data. But there's so much um, more that we can do now. Um, so to, there's a whole range of, um, of um, a whole range of different tools out there between Tableau, Power BI, OSI Pi, um, and some of the coding tools, so Power BI, Python and R, and still SQL and Oracle databases. Um, and it's just an, an enormous array, array. So we'll be specifically talking about Power BI today because that's the tools that Jackie and Alice and myself use. Um, um, and we'd like you to ask any questions that you might have about how we're using them. Um, and, and what we've learned so far. So from here, I'll hand it over to Alice and I'll tell you a bit more about my data uses later on in the, in the session. Thanks a lot, Amanda. And um, just before I get started, I'd also like to pay my respects to the traditional owners on the land in which I'm meeting. So like Amanda, um, I'm close to the city. So it's the people, the, the Wurundjeri people and the Boorong of the Kulin Nations. Um, so I'd like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Um, so now I'm just going to try and share my screen and we can get into it. Let's have a look. Okay, so I think that's all good. 
Perfect. Um, so today I'm going to get started. I'm going to describe the what, the why, and the how of data analytics. And for those of you who don't know me, my name's Alice Drummond, and I'm co-founder of Discover AI. So we're an environmental analytics and visualization consultancy. Uh, we're based here in Melbourne, and we work collaboratively with other consultancies and government organizations to really try and transform their environmental and water data into decisions. Um, but I've also got a background in environmental engineering um, and I previously worked as a large engineering consultancy for about eight years where I specialized in water resource modeling. So I dealt with a lot of data doing that, um, my previous role. But these days I spend majority of my time working in Power BI. So that's one of the business intelligence tools um, that Amanda just mentioned. And um, yeah, I use this on a day-to-day -day basis to really try and streamline data processing. So today I'd like to take you through um, a little bit of an intro and my perspective about what these, why these tools are useful for the water industry. What are some of the options available to you if you wanted to get started? And how can we really get started um, pretty quickly? So I'll take you through um, a very simple demo, just showing you kind of end to end uh, what we can do with these tools in literally 10 minutes. So I mentioned before that I've got a background in water resource modeling. So my typical workflow was actually to build a water resource model. Um, I'd worked predominantly in e-water source, but I did a lot of my calculations in Excel. So I did all my majority of my pre and post processing and modeling results in a lot of different Excel spreadsheets. And these would ultimately feed into summary tables, charts and maps, which would then feed into my project report. But then along the way, something would tend to change. Either I'd want to run another scenario or I'd realize there was a mistake in my model or simply you want to extend your project study for another year or another couple of years. And I'd end up doing this process again and again. And just like Amanda said, um, I also had some pretty cool spreadsheets with um, some really uh, tricky macros to try and automate some of this process. But as you can see, there was a lot of uh, different manual steps involved. And what we'd end up with um, would be usually a large project report with lots of uh, repeating pages in my appendices where I was trying to present all this information from the models. So it was a little bit hard for um, decision makers to digest and use this information. And when we're looking at uh, water resource information or water information as a whole, it's not necessarily um, just one data source that we're interested in. We're usually trying to draw information from a whole range of different data sources. And that's where um, the tools, so business intelligence tools such as Power BI, they can be really powerful to enable us to um, extract and load all of this information into centralized databases and build um, interactive dashboards and reports. Uh, which we can publish up online and share with um, your project team and uh, your clients and different stakeholders in a really nice and automated workflow. And what we end up with um, at the end of the project is uh, more of an ongoing day-to-day -day decision support tool that we can use to um, analyze different layers of information. So it's not saying it's a replacement for um, traditional written reports, but it's just another tool that we can um, that we can develop to try and present information in a different manner. And so we've talked a lot about this uh, mysterious Power BI. Um, so Power BI, it's a business intelligence tool. Um, but as Amanda mentioned, there's a lot of other tools out there. You've probably come across Tableau or Click or Oracle, um, but Power BI, it's my tool of choice. Um, but there's a lot of other business intelligence tools that have very similar functionality. So as we go through um, our examples, um, just keep that in mind. That there's lots of other options out there. So just unpacking Power BI, um, it consists of the Power Query. So this is where we can import our data and do some really kind of simple transformations. It also has a pretty powerful data modeling capability, uh, has visualizations. So this is one of my favorite parts where you can build the interactive dashboards. And it also has the Power BI online service. So you can think of this as a bit like a collaboration hub. And this is where you can share your dashboards um, inside your organization or with external people. Um, so this is a quick intro to Power BI, but I find it's really a lot easier to understand when you actually see it in action. 
So with the business intelligence tools, what we're trying to do is really um, bring our project reports to life essentially. And here's a couple of examples um, of some Power BI reports, um, which I've developed. Uh, so you can see that it's not just the numbers that we're presenting. You can present um, interactive maps and we had an animated schematic before. And it just shows um, a different way of presenting information. And this becomes really important when you're trying to communicate across different audiences who have a broad range of understanding. And especially given my background, when I was trying to explain really sometimes complex modeling results, um, it helps to present information alongside um, all the other pieces of the puzzle to help us understand and interpret this. So what I've gone through so far is really the why these tools are useful for the water industry and what different options are out there. Um, so now I'd like to take another step back and go through the how. So this is the fun part. This is the Power BI demo. So I'm going to go through how to import and transform some data, build a really simple data model, and show you how you can create an interactive dashboard to help visualize your data. So I'm going to use an example, um, just analyzing some climate data. We're going to make some interactive maps and charts and tables and analyze the longer term trends um, in this data set. And just one word of warning, the um, example I'm presenting today is very simple, um, but I, I really just want to present it to you so you can get a taste of what you can do with these tools. Um, and then you can go back to the office and um, do a bit more learning. Cool, so let's get into it. Okay, so now I'm just going to open up the um, Power BI desktop here. So um, Power BI desktop, it's a desktop app. You can see it's similar to Excel. I've got Excel here as well. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is we want to get some data. So we need to import um, some data into our Power BI file. So you can see I've got a blank canvas here. So to do that, um, I'll quickly show you what data we're going to be importing. So this is my climate data. So you can see I've downloaded, I've got 25 different gauges. I've downloaded from Silo in 25 individual tabs. We've got a lot of information. Each has about 50,000 rows of information. So this is daily climate data here. So you could imagine if we were trying to analyze and process this in Excel using a whole series of pivot tables, um, could get pretty clunky pretty quickly. Okay, so I'm just gonna close that. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our data. So I'm going to connect up to that Excel file here. And I'm going to load in all of these tabs. All these are individual tabs in my Excel workbook. So what I'm showing you here is, um, so it's just bringing the data in. Um, there's a lot of other connectors in Power BI. You could connect up to, to your Azure SQL Server database. You could connect up to APIs to read information directly and from online sources. Um, but in the engineering and kind of water industry, I think Excel is a really widely used tool. So this is a pretty common use case. Um, so here we are, we're in this Power Query. So this is where we do our data transformations and processing. Um, so let's get started doing some data transformations. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you can see it's brought in the table. I've just right clicked, I'm going to transform this and I'm just going to capitalize each word to make it a little bit easier to read. So that's good. But the big thing here is we have 26 or 25 individual tabs and we really want these all in the same table. So I'm going to append these queries as a new query. Um, and I'm going to join all of these tables together. So what this does is it really um, just uh, stacks each table on top of each other. And so now we've got all that data in the one table. Now I've, I don't really need all of these columns. So I'm going to select the columns that I want to keep. So I want to keep the min and the max temperature. I want to have a look at the rainfall and the evap. And I'm going to keep this date. So let's remove the other columns. Perfect. So now we've just got the columns here that we want. Um, and one last transformation I'm going to make is you can see in the top left, you can see the data type. So Power BI's had a best guess um, at what it thinks this data type is, but you can see date here. It's not a text. I'm going to change it to a date. And let's just rename this as well. And I'm going to rename my table here. So I'm going through these steps very quickly. 
um, but just to give you a bit of a taste of how we can use this program. Perfect. So the last step here is, um, this is a little bit clunky. I'm going to disable load on each of these 25 individual tabs because we already have this data in that new table which I created where I appended all these tables together. So in practice, um, there will be a lot more efficient ways of doing this in Power BI. We could write a custom query using um, M, which is a query language. We could connect up to the data via different approaches. We could save these as tables in our Excel spreadsheets. Um, but what I wanted to show today is a pretty common use case. This is generally when you're getting started, you're just having a play around, you import everything and then see what you can do. So I've disabled all of those. Now I'm ready to close and apply. So what this does is it brings the data into our Power BI uh, report in, and builds a data model. So I've got a lot of data which I'm importing here. I think it's about 100 megs. Um, but what, what we were doing in the Power Query and why it was so quick was because we were only loading the first thousand lines of each file. So you can do a lot of data processing without that really slow um, kind of lag time that you experience in Excel, you know, where you see the loading, loading or the thinking um, button. So that's, that's one really good thing about the Power Query is it's quite quick to do the transformations. So now we've loaded our data in here. Um, so you'd be able to see here fields, we've got our two tables that we brought in. And if we head over to here, this is the data model. So here you can see that Power BI has automatically um, created a relationship between these two tables. It's auto detected this relationship because we've got the same uh, field heading name, so silo ID in both tables. And what that's doing is if we go over to the table view here, you can see under the silo gauges, we've got a silo ID here. And if we have a look in the data, we've got that same ID here as well. So essentially what it's doing is it's creating a bit like a VLOOKUP between those two tables. For those of you who are familiar with Excel, you can just think of it a little bit like that. That's, what a, that's, that's the easiest way of describing a relational data model. Um, because why would we do that? You can see right down the bottom here, we have about 1.2 million rows of information which we're bringing in. So we only wanna bring in the information which is essentially, like which is really necessary we don't wanna have repeating um, rows of our gauge name 1.2 million times. So that's the reason behind making this data model. So we've imported our data, we've built our data model, and now we get to the fun part. This is the visualizations. So I'm gonna get started really quickly build, building a really quick report. So here, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna visualize where my gauges are. So I've just selected a map here and making sure this is selected, I'm going to bring in my latitude and my longitude and my silo ID as a legend. So pretty quickly, we've got a map of where all our gauges are across the state. So now I wanna have a look at this data. I'm gonna make a time series chart. So I've just got a line chart here. I'm gonna bring my date into the axis. You can see it auto generates me a hierarchy. I'm gonna just have normal date. Let's bring in our evaporation here. Gonna bring in the rainfall. And what this is doing is it's summing up all of the information, um, all of the rainfall on a given day for all of the gauges across um, the state which we've imported. So if I just select one, you can see it filters the information here. So you can really quickly and easily analyze your data. So we might wanna zoom in on a particular period of interest. So here I've just clicked on a slicer. I'm gonna drag my date in here and let's zoom to the last uh, couple of years. So here we're starting to get a little bit more of um, a dashboard. What else would we wanna analyze? Maybe some trends in the, uh, in the temperature. So I've just copied and pasted those visuals. And here I'm gonna drag in my max temperature get rid of those. Let's put our min temperature on. And this time you can see that um, what we're doing here is we're summing up the temperature. So you probably want to change that to average. Um, but you can see really quickly how you can build up a bit of a picture of what's happening um, across the state in terms of rainfall of that. 
min and max temperature. And you can do, this is a very simple, very quick example, um, but you can do some really complex um, analysis using these tools. So I think that's it from me, from my demo. And now I think we're, um, we'll go back to the slides. Um, now we're going to hear a couple more applications, some more complicated applications of Power BI um, from Jackie Kelly from One and Water. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm a senior business analyst at One and Water and we've been working with um, Alice and Christian at Discover AI probably for six or eight months now. So my background is a bit of civil engineering, a bit of, uh, well, quite a lot of software. Uh, Jackie, I think you've dropped out a little bit. Has it dropped out for you, Amanda? Um, send her a message. Yes. Uh, Jackie? Yeah. yeah. Jackie's dropped out. Jack yeah. Do you want me to keep going? Um, yeah, keep going until we sort it out. Until, yeah, maybe if you type in the chat. Um, so I think Jackie was saying that, um, yeah, so she's a senior business analyst at One and Water. Um, and they've been on their Power BI journey, I think, for um, a couple of years now. Um, working across the organization. Um, they've got a team of Power BI super users there. Um, and they've been um, working on a couple of pilot trials across the organization. Uh, this is one of the examples here. This is an example of a Power BI census report, um, which the team have developed. So it's to analyze, um, try and link up the trends in the demographics um, and the population uh, to the sewer and water connection data as well. Um, so this is just one of the examples the team has been working on. Um, so I might just keep going just until yeah, we get, going, yep, going until we get Jackie. So Jackie and her team, they've, they're always on the hunt for a single source of truth. Um, so this is something that comes up a lot when you're talking in analytic circles. And what does it mean exactly? Well, you can see here it means um, uh, we don't want to have duplication of data across the organization, um, which happens when um, people might be copying and pasting data in from a database into Excel. And um, then what happens is you get um, a little bit of confusion around is where did this data come from? What's the origins of this data? And, um, and do we trust this data? So this is really what we're trying to avoid here. So, um, so they're working really hard to try and um, have a single source of truth, which is traceable and um, everyone's working off the same information. And um, the team has been working on a lot of different um, business processes and streamlining different BI tools. Um, one example, which we've been working with them on is to try and streamline their bulk water usage reporting. Um, so this is where, um, they're the one and water team they do uh, quarterly water usage reporting and um, they're trying to essentially do a water balance across um, all of their water users across uh, the network and report on this so you could imagine it's quite um, time consuming to collate all of these different data sets together um, and they had a couple of challenges in their business as usual workflow um, the workflow was essentially they would um, manually download data from a database. They would routinely clean up this data. Um, so the data which was coming in, it's data from um, uh, lots of uh, water collection systems, so things like um, SCADA, so flow through the pipes. They would clean up this data, they'd aggregate it together because it would come in at a uh, at a sub daily level and they need it really um, at the quarterly level. And this would all get fed into what was known as Tim Harold's water balance spreadsheet. So um, Tim Harold uh, previously managed the water resources team and, um, and he had a very, um, uh, very good spreadsheet which would collate all this information and this would ultimately get fed into a report. So this had a couple of, um, 
uh, challenges. We had a number of manual data processing steps. Um, the data was duplicated across the organization in these individual Excel spreadsheets. There was a bit of a limit, a lack of an audit trail. So it's that um, what we were talking about previously, the trying to find the single source of truth, um, trying to trace back the data. And um, it became really difficult for them to share this process data with other teams within the organization. So such as the teams um, who are monitoring the, the night flow and, um, and there was a lot of work done in cleaning up this data, but we're just using it for the bulk water reporting. And I think Jackie's back on the line. I can't believe it. <laughs> that went down. It just, and then I couldn't find the link. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no. Like my control. I'm eventually, I'm back on the phone now. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I'll let you take it from here. I was just discussing. Oh, I have no the, idea. Maybe you should carry on. <laughs> uh, no, well, maybe the next one. So I've just gone over your challenges, uh, the um, bulk water reporting. Okay, and, and did you want to... how, how good Tim was at his job, Tim Harrell's spreadsheet. That was a perfect process. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so, Jackie, how did your team apply the BI tools to streamline the workflow? So we discussed um, the previous workflow with quite a few Excel spreadsheets. Oh, yeah. So we used a, a framework that we had in, in place with um, Azure Data Factory. So basically, we use the Azure Data Factory to suck up data from our SCADA system and a bulk meter data from our um, metering system, from our metering database, and also uh, customer meters. And then we put them into Azure SQL databases. And uh, you did the rest, Alice. You cleaned the data with some R scripting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done a little bit of it, but be it. But basically, the, the important part was using Power BI basically to uh, reveal the trends in the data on a daily basis, which was brilliant. So people could see that data um, more regularly and see the exceptions visually rather than tabulated. Yeah. And then finally, uh, yeah, we had a, a single source of truth and we could increase this transparency. And we had this technological pattern, which is basically a sausage machine that I think we'll use over and over again for different types of data, operational data to information for the business. Yeah, so I guess, um, so the biggest benefit then of having this process is that um, you've streamlined the data processing and um, you've developed a framework which you can use for other projects. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a sausage machine in my in, yeah. in my mind. Yeah, perfect. Now that sounds excellent. Um, so now we can uh, take a look. So we've got um, a short video just showing um, some examples of the tools. So did you want to talk us through this, Jackie? <laughs> I'm completely lost at the moment. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll keep going. Yeah, you keep going, yeah. Awesome. So um, so this is one of the pump stations at One and Water. And we're just going to go through some of the data architecture, which Jackie just uh, walked us through. So this is an example of one piece of the architecture, which is um, developing uh, some of the custom R scripts to clean up the data. So cleaning the data was a really big part of their project. Once the data has been clean, you can see here, we've got a Power BI report. And this was used to um, essentially like an exception report. We want to identify um, anomalies in the data set, have a look at potential outliers in the data sets. Um, here we're having a look at how we're archiving different data points. So this is showing another application of Power BI where you can identify um, different trends and try to um, uh, kind of inform decisions out of this. So what we were trying to do with this uh, Power BI report is really to review the data as a first, after it's been cleaned with a first pass and try to identify areas which need further infilling or cleansing. And so this is an example of one area which needs a bit more data cleaning. You can see there was a bit of an anomaly here at this meter. Um, and that's where developing kind of custom tools come into it. So this is an example of how you can use Excel to actually um, clean up the data. So here we're connecting up to the backend database. This is 
Power BI or Power Pivot in Excel. And then we're automating SQL scripts. So it's writing to the back end here. So instead of um, kind of duplicating and cleaning this data in individual spreadsheets, it's working back to uh, kind of where it started. And then when you're in Power BI, because it's reading directly from the back end from the databases, then this data is all fed through. And ultimately, this is what we were trying to develop here. This is their bulk water usage report. So this is essentially a water balance for the entire system. Um, so you can see on the left here, we've got the water balance. You can analyze over different years. But instead of just seeing the number, you can actually drill into the um, bit more detail, have a look at the cumulative and time series trends across different assets in the system. And you can dynamically kind of inspect this data. So this is um, used for reporting, but also kind of a secondary data checking. And a nice thing about um, Power BI is you can connect up to um, other tools. So here we've embedded a Visio diagram. This shows all their um, bulk water meters. And you can see you can interact with this. Um, so if you know nothing about what these, where, where are these numbers, you can dynamically um, filter on the different assets and zoom into those regions. Um, and you can also analyze and compare trends against previous reporting years. So this is an example of where you're comparing um, trends dynamically for one period against um, like a previous period as well. So this is just a taster of a little bit more um, complicated and complex examples of what Water and Water have been um, working on. And just quickly, Jackie, did you have any, um, any advice for other water authorities or water corporations who are just embarking on this journey? Oh, um, <laughs> we, this is our third attempt really to, yeah. to um, get on top of our corporate reporting. So albeit you're looking at the bulk meters there, we have tried a few um, goes at the past. Um, governance is a big thing. Having uh, people in the business who understand their own data, knowing about Power BI and what it can do seems also very important. And we're still not there. We've still got a long way to go. It's a big effort. And cleaning the data. I mean, people might spend a lot of time taking data out cleaning it up for their own purposes, but just to do what we're doing there to kind of standardize it, it's, it's, it's a big joint effort by a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So what advice um, would you give if people are at the beginning of the journey would, to try and um, uh, like think through what the logical next steps would be? Would it, should they start cleaning the data first or should they start at the end and go self-service BI? No, I think you've got to start really simple, you know, start with some small data sets, know what you're trying to achieve, uh, you know, identify the people who can do that, like the actual people on the front line who know what it's all about. Um, having IT people without having business people with them is no good. You can't just get developers in. They have to be people who know what's going on because it's, it, it's just complicated. Yeah, definitely. And I guess because you're dealing with a lot of um, very kind of specific data sets, you really need to have that subject matter expert involved in the process. Yeah. And we have, we have had in the business, we, got, we had a lot of silos, you know, business units that worked very well independently. And uh, they kept their data sets extremely well. And I guess the magic is being able to join across those data sets to, to really reveal some insights. Um, and to do that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of collaboration. Yeah, definitely. Be ready for it. It's good though. I mean, it really is good. It's like, I mean, the, the benefits once you get there are seem to be, you know, um, tangible. Um, it makes people happier. It's, you know, it's, it's people looking exceptions, not just, you know, prepping up a lot of data. Yeah, a lot more interesting. And um, I hope and people, so. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. Fantastic. Um, was there anything else to add before we go to Amanda and hear about some other applications? No, no, thank you. Perfect. Thank I'll you so much. I'll have to take questions afterwards if anyone's got questions. Fantastic. I think there'll be lots of questions. Cool. Um, so I'll hand over to you, Amanda.
Great, thank you. And and just for everybody out there listening, just a reminder, you can put your questions in um, to the question panel and it will hold them until the end. Um, so please um, do that. Um, and anybody who likes someone else's question, give it a big tick and that way we can prioritise answering that question for you at the end. Um, so I'm... As I said, I work, my name is Amanda Hazel. Um, my day job is at Melbourne Water uh, and I'm the portfolio reporting and analytics manager for our major program delivery. So Melbourne Water delivers approximately half a billion dollar capital program every year. And my team's role is reporting on um, financial health of the, all of those projects, um, reporting on um, time and um, time and delivery um, efficiency on those projects um, and for the, for, for the whole business, regardless of whether they are big um, treatment plant upgrade projects right down to um, small minor capital jobs and also our IT um, capital portfolio. Um, so I just thought I'd give some really simple examples of how we've um, used Power BI to help us um, provide the business more insights into what's going on with our capital program. Um, and, and how we've done that pretty quickly over the last couple of years. So um, on the um, left-hand side of the slides here, um, you'll see um, what is called the Rainbow Report. Um, so that was how we used to report on all our capital financial data. It's a, a massive big spreadsheet that looks at all our different forecasts, monthly, annual, those sorts of things, um, and has every project in there split by group team section who's looking after it who's delivering it um, um, and um, that used to be that gets was sent around on a monthly basis at the end of the month um, and then teams could go and have a look at um, chopping down to um, what what they might be interested in so what's their team delivering um, there might be multiple versions of this spreadsheet going around because someone would save a local copy and, and do what they wanted to do to it to present the information to their leadership team um, so yeah you could have multiple sources of truth as Jackie was saying about two years ago um, Melbourne Water um, implemented um, one of Microsoft's other tools for project management, Project Online. And with it, we got Power BI as um, our, our tool set as far as our reporting hub goes. Um, and the, the um, diagram you here see on the, on the right-hand side is actually um, our next 10-year capital plan um, split into um, our different products. So we split things into water, sewer, um, and waterways and drainage, because we're responsible for all of those three functions within um, the Melbourne metropolitan area. But then we also look at um, sub-investment programs, and we can see how much money is being spent um, in those investment programs just by looking at the different colours on the donut. Can you move to the next slide for me, Alice? So really, um, one of the things that I would emphasise that's really important when you're starting to use these analytical tools is to try and understand what decisions do you want to make in the first place. Um, so do you want to know um, how much how much money you spend on an annual basis? Do you want to know how much a team or a group is um, going to be delivering in our case? Um, and, and Or do you want to know how um, what's being spent, for example, over a 10-year period on projects related to growth in Melbourne or renewals of assets. So um, we can split those really, really easily by using um, some slices and tick boxes that um, take that all slice things based on our metadata. Um, and as you can see, I've taken a subset um, from this large one down here just to look at the water program over the um, over the next 10 years and, and have a look at, well, how are we, how have we split that spend across um, the different drivers that we might have to do um, capital projects. Next slide for me, Alice. The other thing um, that it makes it really easy to do is actually drill down and see a bit more detail around um, lists and, and, and therefore be able to export that information really easily. So um, I've gone and um, had a look in, to see, well, how, how many projects are we going to be delivering during that 10 year period through um, our major program groups? So we've got um, a couple of service providers that um, are providing um, construction services to us. What projects are they going to be delivering? 
when are they going to be delivering them and what are this, the dollar value of them and that's been really easy so that was two clicks of a button to get to um, get that subset of a list which makes it really easy um, for people across the business um, this information um, because the whole business has power bi um, people can go and um, do these reports themselves they can go and put these filters on themselves and find out stuff that is interesting to their team really really quickly um, I would um, emphasize everything that Jackie said before in that um, getting a good data governance structure set up is probably the most important thing so that you don't have people creating um, 20 reports that might look um, pretty much exactly the same, but they're not quite. Um, so the numbers or the figures or the information that they're providing is slightly different. So um, get some control around how that works to start with. Um, but then let people um, um, make their own reports, let people use the visual, visualisation um, to, to get the information that they need. The other um, piece of advice I would say is use the right tool for the right purpose. So we've talked about a bunch of different tools um, tonight, um, mainly focused on Power BI. Power BI is great because um, for Excel uses it's fairly intuitive, but some of the other tools such as Tableau, um, and um, some of the um, high OSI um, type um, stuff might be more suitable, for example, um, for your organisation or the data type that you're um, looking at. So really think about what, what do you want to do with your information before you select the right tool for your organisation and maybe you need more than one is a piece of advice I'd give. But um, apart from that, um, happy to take any questions and I can see we've got a few uh, down the bottom there already. Um, so we'll have a quick look um, and, and yeah, answer your questions as we go. All right, so um, have you done any Power BI reporting on water quality from Mariella? Um, I would, do you want to, do you have any feedback on that, Alice? Um, I might hand that one over to Jackie. We've, we've done a little bit of um, Power BI reporting on water quality and it is um, quite a lot um, more challenging because of all the ad hoc sampling and things like that. But I think, um, Jackie, have you done some at One and Water? Oh, we've done some uh, we did some quite complex stuff and we did a lovely dashboard, but um, the business, it was great while we had somebody in the business who was interested in it and then all of a sudden they left and then nobody was interested in it. So mm -hmm. maybe there's a lesson learned there, but it was very, very fabulous. Um, we've also got um, some very simple uh, Power BI reporting that one of the group from operations has done. Um, and basically, but they've been doing a lot of SSRS reports over the years and they're gradually going to port those into Power BI. So I think we'll probably have more in the future. So yeah. I'll guess from feedback, I would, so I'm a water quality, um, ex, that's my background originally. Um, and we've used um, Tableau to provide some of those um, dashboards previously, but because you're connecting in, um, in generally you'd be connecting into at the very least an Excel spreadsheet or um, a SQL database if you're um, storing your water quality information correctly or maybe you're collecting information from online um, monitoring sources, you definitely could use um, Power BI to report on your water quality information and produce dashboards that would be useful. So, um, Just one yeah. more thing I would add in. Um, so, one, so Power BI is excellent has lots of uh, great functionality, but it also is um, still a fairly new tool and it doesn't have the same functionality as Excel in some aspects. So one thing to be aware of when trying to visualize water quality is while you can generate a line chart, so like what we showed before, for continuous um, X axis, you can't put points on the line mm -hmm. chart. So something as simple as that, and that is something that you really um, sometimes do need for water quality information. I know like I've got a background in groundwater as well. And um, that's one thing which I was um, really surprised that mm -hmm. Power BI couldn't do. So just, um, yeah, just beware of little things like that that might, um, might trip you up if you go too far down um, one path as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the spatial aspect of Power BI might be useful for water quality, mm, though. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. definitely it's got lots of spatial um charts like it can integrate with arcgis online you can use it with mapbox you can create heat maps mm. yeah all right so um we can go to david's question um what's the best way to develop this in a water business should it be driven by a data expert or a water systems expert where do you learn how to do power bi modeling so uh, I'll start and say, provide a bit of context. I've been in my role for a year. I'd never touched Power BI um, before I started the role. I had a bit of, I had background in, um, oh, we've got more back. <laughs> I had some background in, um, in data analytics, um, but completely learning a new system. Um, it was very easy um, to learn how to use Power BI um, very quickly. Um, so I think you could be multifunctional is my feedback and my advice on that. Yeah, I agree. I guess I've come, um, I don't have a background in data per se. I've done a lot of modeling and with that you deal with a lot of data and a lot of coding. Um, but I think that it's really important to, um, talk to both the IT and the data analytics people at the same time as the kind of subject matter experts of the water people as well. Um, so where do you learn how to do Power BI? There's a lot of online resources, heaps of tutorials out there. But in my experience, a lot of the training material is focused on the finance, sales, logistics yeah. data sets. So it can be um, a little bit tricky because water information is quite a lot um, different to these data sets. Yeah, so do your research. There are organisations out there that are specific to the utilities, um, specific to the water industry. So um, have a look and, and, and a lot of them present and um, provide training exactly in the format we're meeting in tonight, which is via online stuff. So um, yeah, have a look is my advice. Yeah. Jackie, did you have anything to add? Oh, I think Power BI is a great tool, but you do need a partner for the back end architecture, mm -hmm. you know, for doing a lot of that extract, extracting the data from the source databases, you know, transforming it, loading it into something that Power BI can uh, consume easily for an end user who's not an IT person would be my sort of, so yes, Power BI is great, but if you, yeah, the, it can be quite deep. I think, I think an IT partner is a good idea. A, a back-end IT partner yeah. is probably valuable. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Alice? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah so when I first started, I was focused solely on the front end. I loved that. But then um, you realize after a couple of weeks, no, you need to go back and learn the back end. Um, you can do, yeah. so, it's so much more powerful when you understand a bit of, um, a bit of SQL, a bit of coding. Um, yeah. So definitely, and you'll find if you're working with other organizations that it does come down to IT with the admin roles. They've got a plan in place usually. Um, so just make sure that you get both parties on side as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and from my perspective, I actually have that um, person in my, in my broader team who provides that support. Um, and I've got a few people in my team like myself and um, someone else who can go and look at how the data models constructed and figure out and pull it apart. So, um, and we've had to learn that to try and do some troubleshooting if need be. Mm. Yeah. All right. We've got a question. Is Power BI able to perform predictive analytics? Alice, yeah. I'll let you well, get this one because I don't use it for this at the moment. So yeah, it has a little bit of capability. It's really um, well suited for analyzing kind of historical data. Um, it can do a little bit of predictive analytics. It does have um, uh, like some artificial intelligence capability. It's still really new and I'd probably warn against it. It's, in my opinion, it's not the best tool for doing complex predictive analytics. You could use it um, if you wanted to do scenario analysis. So say you had run some models in the past or you have some historical um, stream flow or water quality information, you can use um, different scenario parameters to dynamically adjust it. Um, but to do kind of more complex predictive analytics, I'd probably use a different tool like machine learning or something like that or a specific modeling tool. Um, but I, at the same time, it's Power BI is fairly new. It changes monthly. There's monthly releases. They're investing a lot of work 
in um, in this area. So probably in the next couple of years, it will get some really good predictive capabilities. But at the moment, um, there's ways around it, but I would uh, use it mainly for scenario analysis or data reporting. That's what, what do you think, Jackie? Oh, I'm kind of torn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got that machine, Azure machine learning sort of uh, capability, it can tap into that is one thing. And then the yeah. R scripting as well in the background, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It, it is a bit basic at the moment, but it's, it is there. Yeah, exactly. And you can also um, actually connect up to other uh, programs as well inside mm. it. Like you can run Python scripts in the um, Power Query. You can yeah. run R scripts in the visualization. So um, at this stage, I don't think it has really nice predictive analytics. You can do scenarios. You can, um, if you if you have an understanding of your data, you can create those predictive models and run those. But um, is that your understanding too, Amanda? Yeah, 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 yeah. But like I said, I'm not using that side of things very often. So, or even really, we've just started exploring it. So, yeah. Um, it's it's from my perspective. I think using the Azure Data Factory and the Azure Machine Learning in that sort of pipeline, um, the capability is there. It's just we're not ready to use it. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So question from Chris around single points of failure. Um, when only one person knows how to use the spreadsheet, how is this alleviated with Power BI? Um, there's a huge community of Power BI users all around the world is what I'd say, um, who are always willing to provide advice and you can put questions up on um, the chat rooms and stuff and um, you will get an answer. So. I've asked how to do things and I've had 20 people respond to me, um, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. But I think um, also like uh, one big thing is if you have um, a spreadsheet that you manage yourself and it's one person's spreadsheet. So in one of Mortar's case, it was um, Tim Harold's spreadsheet. They might know that spreadsheet really intimately. Um, and if you're moving towards uh, Power BI, um, what that does is it means that we don't have to have all the data locked in one spreadsheet. You can publish it online to the service. You can share and collaborate with multiple users across the organization. And um, it's really about kind of opening up that data. And if you create a network of Power BI super users, so like what they've done at One and Water, then you can have lots of people who have an understanding um, of that data and it's just about making I think the data a lot more um, transparent and um, available to the organization that's my take on it uh, what yeah. do you think Jackie yeah similarly I think it's like um, identifying the roles and the responsibilities and have a bit of not succession planning because it's not that big a job but you know have one or two people that can actually do it and are looking at it regularly and then also if you reuse the data for another purpose the quality of the data is going up and there's more than just that one person interested in it. So that kind of, it's kind of a, a self-fulfilling sort of um, yeah, thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. More people looking at it, so the quality is better. So it's got a higher interest level. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ask questions about it. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. So there's a question about licensing fees and things. Um, so, it depends on how your organization's got your other Microsoft licenses set up is my feedback. That's what I know. So um, at Melbourne Water, we are very lucky that everybody has access to Power BI um, through the, our licensing structure. Um, but you'd have to talk to your specific um, IT department, I guess, around what their arrangement is with Microsoft. So it, yeah, so it sounds like um, Melbourne Water must be on a premium capacity. So I think that's when um, uh, for a certain number of users, then yeah. it makes financial sense um, and it's cheaper to get everyone on a premium. But if you're just starting out, you could have a look at there's pro license options available. So yeah, talk to your IT. Um, it costs, um, I think, 10 US dollars per user per month for a pro scheme. So it's very affordable. Um, but as Amanda said, you might already have like an E5 enterprise license. So that mm -hmm might include premium. 
Yeah. So that's, yeah, really my advice, just talk to your IT department if you think you need to use it. Um, and we didn't have that initially when um, we first started using it. We had selected users and that's the whole business of having it is only a new thing. So we've only got 220 users or employees, I think, at one and water or something in that, or the 220 to 240. So it doesn't make any sense for us to have an enterprise license at this stage. So I think the cost, so anyone who needs a license gets a pro license. And I think you're right, it's about 10 US a month mm. per person. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Okay. Um, has the use of Power BI um, assisted in regarding to providing more clarity to senior management and or board and better facilitate approvals? Yes, it definitely has. Um, so it makes um, things more transparent. Uh, people can trust the numbers. People can trust the information because it's coming straight from um, our capital finance database and, and um, so they can go in and, and look at the live data as forecasts change and, and things on a, on a daily basis. So yes, I would say definitely it has um, helped um, in getting um, better, more support, more clarity. And it means we can quickly cut the information into whatever format they might want. Um, so that process might take us an hour to create a new report, whereas if you have it start with an Excel spreadsheet, it could take a lot longer than that previously. Jackie, any feedback from you on that? I'm not sure who's breaking up. Am I breaking up or are you breaking up? I think it might be Amanda. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think I agree with Amanda. We've had some small wins. We haven't had massive big wins, unfortunately, but maybe in the next couple of months we may have because we're probably going to use this as an opportunity to, to grow our Power BI user groups and, you know, get some decent reporting out there, keep us all busy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess from my exp experience, we've worked together with a couple of other um, government organisations to really, um, Power BI allows you to really kind of present information in a way that it's easy for people at board level um, to understand. So instead of um, just showing a bunch of kind of financial numbers in a PowerPoint presentation, um, one example is we're working with, um, with uh, Sydney Border and they can take uh, modelling results. They had all of these Excel financial models 140 spreadsheets uh, and bring that, present that in Power BI um, so that people could interactively, dynamically assess, um, it was some financial modeling um, at a board level. So it really, I think this presenting information in this way does facilitate those dis discussions as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, Oh, sorry. I was going to say our, our, our exec and board and managers are all keen for lots of reporting. So that's good news <laughs> for us. We yeah. haven't quite realised it yet. So we have just hit seven o'clock or just about hit seven o'clock by, um, by my clock at the moment. Um, we've got a few more questions still to answer. Um, but Alice and Jackie and I are, both, are all happy to look through the questions and, um, and send a response to them as part of the res um, response email. Normally, normally um, you have an opportunity to come and chat to us, um, come and chat to us after the, after the event, um, but happy to, um, happy to sort of um, get those questions. And if you've got any more before we shut the, before we shut the um, webinar down, um, just put them in and we will respond to them um, at a later date. And we're also happy to, um, oh, I'm saying for myself, I'm happy if you'd like to connect via LinkedIn or via an email, um, if you've got any more questions. So Alice, same for you. Yep, perfect. That's yeah. Fine. Yep. Jackie? Yep, same. Any right. questions, anytime. Do my best. Right. Great. And, and, and it's not that I want to cut off the discussion, but I am very well aware that um, all of us are spending a lot of time on Zoom and Skype and mm -hmm. various other social media 
uh, other channels, visual channels at the moment, both for work and social um, interactions. So just trying to make the best use of people's time. Um, we've got a couple more webinars that we've got in the planning at the moment. Um, so 23rd of April in a couple of weeks time, what makes you optimistic? And we've got some great speakers lined up for that um, to have a chat about what's making them optimistic in, in the world that we're living in at the moment. And then on the 19th of May, um, we've got um, a webinar around dealing with disasters um, and um, got some great speakers lined up for that as well. So keep an eye on the webmail um, and more. Um, there's more on the AWA website as well because it's not just Vic Branch um, running these, I believe, but other states are going to start running them too. So, um, and it's great to have had a few people from interstate on the line today. So thank you very much. And thank you to Jackie and Alice for your contributions tonight. Thanks thank a you. lot, Amanda. No thank worries. You. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye. 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 Great job.